Hello and welcome everyone, this is Dmitry. We are having another network programmability stream. Today I'm going to continue writing code for the Nornir, which is Python automation framework. Um, there are some um, uh, there are some open issues that I want to work on and um, apparently if I don't dedicate some time on my calendar just to work on this, I never get to it. Um, and uh, because I have so many work projects and personal projects that uh, I am very interested uh, in and it seems like I never get find time to work on this which is also important so I decided hey um, I'm going just to work on this on the stream uh, why not you know just to continue writing code for the library um, and this is what we are going to do today. Now, before jumping into today's topic, uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to share with you as always on the stream. Uh, also, well, for people who are watching this as a recording on YouTube, uh, please check out the description description below. Um, there is always a time code. So if you are not interested in some of the sections, so for example, if you are not interested uh, in some of the things that I would like to share with my audience like right now, feel free to jump into different sections of the video. Uh, since I do realize that the recording is usually around three hours or so, and it's not really realistic to expect people to watch all of the, the whole three hours. So do leverage that, it's a, it should be in the description. Okay, um, let before doing that it seemed that my OBS broke again so I don't see notifications on my screen about someone uh, so someone following following or donating uh, I have never found the problem with that uh, so I'm looking right now on my stream lab logs so it's Alex R um, thank you for following Alex very much appreciate it so yeah, I do not know why it's not popping up on the screen. Every so often I have this problem, um, but that's all right. So things that I would, would like to share with you. So one of the, well, the saddest things is I promised you folks that we are going to have an exclusive stream about some things that hasn't been released yet. And it has, and I was discussing this for quite a while with several folks and unfortunately early this week I got and well I got a response that it will not be possible uh, since it's still too early in the development phase the things that I've wanted to share sh show you on the stream so unfortunately we will not have that um, I'm very sad about it and I'm actually also very sorry about about promising something and then not delivering but yeah unfortunately there isn't much I could do um, the idea was shut down mainly because it's still it's still um, far from the um, from the like product release so um, yeah that's very unfortunate now another one is that um, I was two days in Brussels and uh, I met two people that are very famous in the community and uh, I actually took a selfie with also this guy is Peter Palich I, I will never be able to pronounce his surname correctly I'm sorry for that so he uh, he's right now working at Cisco but previously he wasn't he was um, uh, he was doing a lot of teaching and he was one of the people who um, wrote an implementation of EHRP based on RFC um, so being being external to Cisco which is pretty cool he is also author of um, several books which are really really great his technical expertise is just second to none. He's probably one of the most smartest people I have ever met. Um, I remember I had one of the um, 
Um, I had one of the issues with the HRP where I didn't understand like why it's the case, why it's happening. So if I remember correctly, because it was quite a while ago, that um, I was concerned like why if, if we use a leak map in the HRP and we leak all of the routes and you using stuff feature, uh, isn't this going to break e uh, EJRP stop in the first place? Um, and he actually, uh, we have been struggling with other tech engineers, by the way, on this question for quite a while, like why it's the case. And he, I asked him once and he just replied to me within, within five minutes and showed me a diagram why, it, how it is happening and why. So yeah, he's extremely smart. If you ever met meet him either like a Cisco Live or as some other event, make sure to talk to him. He knows routing really, really, really well. So um, and this person, this is Elaine. She is um, CCDE program manager. So also very very active in the networking community, and uh, yeah, she's uh, a very a uh, very pleasant person to talk to and yeah i'm very happy that i managed to to meet them uh well not for the first time but you know see, seeing friends is always always great especially considering that i usually work from home so i don't go to office uh i don't go to office very often Okay, another thing is uh, just two days ago, I received an email from the um, from the Cisco DevNet. So I submitted a workshop about Nornier um, for DevNet Create, which is their annual network programmability conference held in San Jose in the end of April. And I got I got notification that that talk was accepted. So. I'm very excited about this. This will be my first time going to this conference. I'm looking forward to it. Um, looking forward to talk to other network programmability folks uh, inside DevNet and external. So I'm pretty sure we'll have a great time there. Now, last thing, uh, Cisco Live Europe is right around the corner. Um, it's going to be in Barcelona this year, like last year and it's going to start next monday so well not tomorrow but in a week uh, and i'm going to have a couple of presentations there well i actually workshop so i have one workshop on nornier again another one is about python async io um, so those are going to be devnet workshops in devnet area but i also registered for what is called um a meet the engineer uh, walk in so it's uh, engineers from Cisco can register for this program, specify availability and topics that they feel comfortable talking to uh, talking about, and customers coming to Cisco like you, uh, Europe on the spot can um, can schedule an MTE um, regarding their topic of interest. So I have registered for that. I have a couple of slots around uh, during the week. So if you have some network automation, programmability, Python, whatever um, topic to talk to about, uh, make sure to leverage this program or just find me on uh, uh, inside the venue and we'll have a chat. I'm very, very excited about that too, since Cisco Life is an event where a lot of networking, networking experts uh, across the world are coming and we're just having a great time there um so yeah looking forward to it okay enough uh, enough talks and let's actually jump right into the, today's topic which is nornier so we have we have been having the um nornier um nornier streams uh for quite a while i think we already had like five or so um, about Nornier, so we had like an introductionary no Nornier talk, uh, sorry, talk stream, and then also I was already working on some code for Nornier as well. So um, I'm going to take some of the um, open issues and just walk through them and submit PR if we will have time for that. Now, one of the things that 
that um, happened is, I think three months ago, I fixed, I, I made a, several improvements to Narnia. Uh, and I submitted PR. However, let me find those. Yeah, so these two. So change login configuration and add support for multiple connections. Um, so I submitted those PRs. However, the problem was we were right in the middle of um, changing the Nornier core to a different library. Um, and it changed a lot of things, uh, how everything should be done internally inside Nornier. So what happened is I submitted TPR, but this another work on this transition was also ongoing. And we decided that we will, we will uh, work on that first. We will uh, merge it and then we will have to uh, rework our outstanding PRs. Um, to make sure that there are no conflicts. So we merged the code, but I have never had a chance to rework those PRs. Um, and I also tried actually at some point, but I realized that it's actually too much. I mean, it's too much to like rebase and merge. There are too many conflicts. So it was easier to just close the PR and now we are going to rework them probably like from scratch or using some of that um, and try to submit PR again using the new informant. Now I'm thinking that today I'm going to uh, work on logging. Since I already work on this the first one we actually worked on that on the stream before. Uh, I don't want to kind of like work on the same thing again. But logging, even though it sounds kind of like not that important, I think you may learn also a lot of um, things like how logging in Python works. Um, actually, it's not that hard. So a lot of people say that Python logging is a mess and, and their API is a mess. I t tend to agree it's not really like that easy However, once I started, starting, like, started um, you know, reading about it and then trying to do some hands-on, I realized that it's actually not so bad. And every, every like, decision there, every like, flag or something actually makes sense. And there are like, just a couple of rules here and there, like how the logging is processed in Python, but they are not super complex. So um, I hope like, even though I, I'm going to like work on this for a specific purpose of merging this into Nornier, I think you may learn something new for uh, yourself, like how Python logging works uh, since, um, since we are going to touch that a lot today. Um, Max Sam6, thank you very much for following. I hope you're having a great time. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So I'm thinking like how I should actually proceed. I think the first thing that we should do is we should go to our folder, make sure we download all of the latest stuff from the repo. Uh, so what? This is going to be projects. Uh, my forks non here yeah and this status async helper what is that this is empty for okay the net comp ones I don't care about them too much 
uh, they have never been merged into the core so it should be fine and also it says your branch is ahead of origin develop oh okay that's fine so we have two remotes I have my fork which is origin and I have no new automation which is upstream so what we are going to do we are going to say git fetch upstream and then uh, we will have to what we will have to git merge upstream uh, develop okay it's up to date okay I have to double check so we have develop we have master why do we have master and develop is weird here too i'm not sure develop is the right place for this it's si what six months ago ten months ago six months ago a year ago i don't think i'm in correct place right now to be honest with you what master also old commits oh i'm sorry i am i'm actually an idiot um i should look here so nor near automation nor near branch develop eight days ago and what else so we have 2.0 2.00 beta uh i don't yeah we don't put in this branch anything master yeah i'm on current branch so yeah i'm going to use this develop branch okay all right so okay so our task is to rework logging interesting white okay i i don't want to touch this right now we will not be working on that conf today now there is another thing that i noticed so someone raised a bug recently about this duplicate output in or near a log file. Uh, to be honest, I think looks to me that nor near log file has duplicate output. Below some content in my nor near log file. Is it really issue or did I set something wrong in my nor near nor near configuration. Um, I'm going to leave a comment here and I will also try to check the bucket as well. So, um, can you share your, uh, what, your nor near code as well as config camel? Okay, I will also try to check this right now because if this is the case we can like solve it in one go it's all related to logging anyway um, okay now there is another piece that is really really important I don't think file work I'm going to remove this virtual environment here, so rmrf env um, and we will say python to check what is the current python version ok it's 368 which is ok so we can now say uh, mkvnv and we will have to um, we will have to also install I think requirements dev file which says this is this and this and then minus r requirements txt all right so it's pip install minus r requirements uh, dev txt so this will take quite some time so um, the reason I do this is that I don't remember 
when and using what tool I was creating this virtual environment so it's better to kind of like just redo it meanwhile um, I think I have this sandbox folder uh, yeah there are a couple of pieces that I actually have to do I have to exclude folders. So mark directory as excluded. Okay. Well, this one should be fine. Now, serial connection test. I don't care about that. What about this main py file? I have no idea what it's doing. So what about this one? Okay, this one looks correct ish. Sandbox 2. So these names are uh, just horrible. <laughs> so, non workers, let's put 10. Uh, Raison error true, inventory simple inventory, login to console true, hosts file, and um, groups file. Now, this is actually incorrect, so yeah, let's try doing this. So, since Nornier 2.0, everything should go under the data. Um, Data. And now this must be at least empty dictionary. So this is my config YAML. Now hosts YAML. Uh, platform IS. Okay, I have here CSR dev. This is the one that I'm going to need. Um, and for platform, I think I will have to put iOS for now since we will need to use netmeek or to check something um now yeah i think i'm going to need my devices and just bear with me a second i'm thinking that i may need uh, several devices for test so i'm going to get another device hopefully if i if it's not broken yeah it seems it's not broken so i have csr dev and I have CSR3 which has this IP address so I have CSR3 and the host name is going to be this IP address okay fine so I have CSR and I have CSR3 now what else I'm going to do uh, I can put Tax uh, CSR like here for like filtering. What is this test py file? Where is this? Is it async? Yeah, oh yeah, it's async. Yeah, I don't care about that. Uh, this one. Yes, yeah, this one I, I think I can copy. So. We'll say No, I'm I'm thinking if I if I'm doing everything correctly or not and Yeah actually not. I have to I have to create a new 
yeah I have to uh, create a new uh, branch so git checkout b uh, let's check our branches first um, let's do git checkout checkout b improve logging okay we are now on the new branch which is the way it's supposed to be now here I can I'm thinking what is the best way to do it here okay this one well, I can leave it, but I'm not going to. Yeah, logging, uh, logging config, dig config. I uh, I commented that out. Now, here I want to have a filter which says tags uh, what contains CSR and then um, CSRs. CSRs. We are going to send send make a command connection name we are not going to have that and common string is going to be sharp interface brief is fine and then we are going to print result and uh, that's pretty much it we don't need anything else so i am running command this command on number of devices on two of them and then I print result. Now config YAML should also point to the correct yeah it, it seems it points to correct place. Okay so I should be able to now say um, Python sandbox uh, test logging now it says no module name nor near no module named Nornia. What is going on here? Um, oh, I know what that is. Right. That's fine. Yeah, I have to install like Nornia using pip install minus c dot. So that it, it's being installed uh, using setup.py in the same folder. So now I will try running this again. And it says, cannot import name in it near. Uh, yes, because it's in different place now. So it should be like this, I think. Okay, this didn't work out so well, did it? Oh, okay, so I don't start this function at all, so. No conf. What is going on here? Um. Oh, okay. I have to go to sandbox folder and run this again. Um. Right. Meta module. Object argument after hmm, is mapping not string. Okay, this is super weird. It's literally crushing on config YAML. Oh, I think yeah, I know what it is as well. Um, we also changed this a little bit, so I have to actually go to tutorial. So no your tutorial. Yeah, when you don't work on project for a long time. You actually forget a lot of stuff. Uh, is it in how to? Or in configuration? Yeah, it should be here. So yeah, this is a new format um, that we had. So I have to copy that. Um, so core, no workers, let's say 10, plugin, and then hosts file is going to be in the same folder. Okay, 
Let's run this again. Okay, it's worked out pretty well. And uh, you see that my host YAML contained four devices and I filtered them based on the uh, tax CSR, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, I really like, um, I really like this feature, like look at this. So I had four devices, right? And using this F filter, you can nest it the way you want. So in this case, I said tax, which was the name of the attribute. And this is a special dunder. Uh, well, Python has underscore underscore contains. So we can use this uh, using a little bit different notation and it will check if this tax has CSR in it. I think pretty, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so we filtered and then we send show up interface brief and it ran successfully. Okay, awesome. Now, uh, if uh, um, that issue, if this issue is correct, we should have the same problem uh, in Nornier lock. Uh, is correct? Is it correct date? Yeah. Well, I can definitely confirm this issue, right? So we see here that uh, the log is being added twice, all right? So yeah, this log is being run twice. So that something is de definitely incorrect. And we will have to fix that. Okay, so let's go to init Nornier. Can I find oh uh, hold on. I think I will have to specify the um, point it to the proper interpreter. Dhaud Z, thank you very much for following. Okay. Okay, this looks good. Now, uh, why this doesn't work? I cannot find. Oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Uh, I am not in correct place. So let's move this to the opposite group. We will kill everything else. Nope, nope, nope. Um, so we will need only test logging py and we will need normal log. We can kill everything else. Okay, so I need to go to init normal and check what is going on. Okay, so there is an argument called configure logging. And I, why it's not here though? It nor near. Configure logging will true.
Oh, this code is new to me. <laughs> uh, interesting. To be honest, well, this argument is here, but it's not even documented. Mm. Extend formation to pass is from there. So what if we... Um, Okay, let's look on this config. There is special logging uh, this. I don't like how it looks. I mean, if you want to have, if you want to enable or disable logging, you should provide it on this level and be done with this. Um, so what is this? doing so def a lot from logging file config dict if config file we will open the file and we will call deserialize jesus christ well yeah configure logging here doesn't fall under keyword arcs so in this case, keyword args is going to be empty. So we will just uh, parse the config file. So config dict config file types f. If open config file r as f config dict is, we will just load this. So this is going to be a simple dictionary, which we pass here and we will uh, start logging config here see i i don't like how it looks ah uh, okay so the first thing that i want to have is i would like to have like enabled here enable true or false configuration logging config And then it's by default enabled true whether to log to console or not. And loggers. Loggers to config. What is this? Okay, this part doesn't make any sense to me. Default or new. Yeah, I don't I don't think this is useful at all. Um so let's say we have level, fine, file, fine. Uh, if you want to send it to console, fine, and the format, that's fine. This part doesn't seem really relevant to me at all. So I would add here like enabled true or false. Um, and by default it would be true. Now, okay, let's look what is happening. So we know that this conf contains conf.logging, which has some options, all right? Now, if you go here, this is where we configure logging. Jesus Christ. So root handles list root This is so bad. Yeah, this is this is not very. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Now I'm still wondering, like, 
white's coming from why is this lock is coming from two places this doesn't make sense to me at all like so um yeah we'll have to check something so let's do python logging python logging propagate default this attribute evaluates to true events log to this logger will be passed to the handlers to higher level logging so in addition to any handlers attached to this logic uh, logger message are passed directly to the ancestor well if this evaluates to false the constructor set this attribute to true okay fine so what this really means is if i say poetry run a python oh i don't have poetry right so do i have ipython um i think i need pip install ipython and ipdb okay and I think I will need to deactivate and activate this again. Okay. So now I should be able to say I Python. Yeah. So um, what I wanted to do, so if we import logging and let's say Nornier, well, we'll say logger is logging.getLogger, Nornier. So if I say log logger propagate, but by, by default it's true. Okay. So what this means is that um, so the way um, the way Python logging works, plain text, it is a tree. Okay. So at the very top of the tree you have root logger. Then you may have like your top level logger, let's say Nornier. Okay. Then you may have nested loggers here, let's say Nornier core, and so on and so forth. Then here you may have like NetMeek or something, um, and then so on and so forth. Now, what happens is that if you use any kind of logger, let's say, um, let's say this logger, right? Uh, whenever you are uh, Whenever you um, send the log to this logger, uh, this log is going to be processed by all handlers of this logger, plus by all handlers uh, handlers of every parent. It is so because of this propagate. So I think if I I'm not 100% sure this will work, but let's try. I think this one will show me the log twice. Um, no, it actually didn't. Like, I don't remember how, how it's done when it is on the console, but I'm pretty sure that I'm right. So in this case, since logger propagate is true, what it means is that first we process the log by our handlers, and then we send this log to parent um, parent logger and then, then it's being processed by its handlers. Um, I think I know what that is. Uh, since a logger has handlers is false. So yeah, so this doesn't have anything. Okay, so it's false. So there are no handlers on this level, on Nornier level. So this log is being sent to root and by default root uh, is logging um, warning to warning or above to console so this uh, this log is coming from a root logger now if you say uh, what import logging what file handler yeah i think you can say something like test log or wait, hold on. Is there like I think stream handler, right? Stream handler, and then um, 
xt std out uh, and you will have to say level is uh, error well warning okay because I think well Okay, so if I say a logger at handler. And then I am going to add this logger. Okay, so now logger handlers is this. So I have a stream handler, and let's say logger level is going to be what? Debug. Okay, so I have this logger in Nornir with level debug, and uh, it has handlers. Now I think if I did it correctly, if I send an error, it should be shown twice, which it didn't. Why it didn't? Oh, I know what it is. Sorry, Fox. So level, yeah, this should be, okay. And let's try this again. Is it show no, I also broke this, okay, damn it. Let's do import sys and then let's say logging. Logger handlers zero, uh, stream. Yeah, so when you import sys and you will say what is going on here? Let's try our logging again. No, it's still being done once. Is it because this level is not set? Um, could be. Will this work now? <laughs> Interesting, it's still being shown on the console once. Okay, all right. It seems that I don't remember logging as, as much as I think I did. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that this propagate, uh, which is default, sends logger to the root logger, logger, logger as well. So I guess what is happening here is This, this log comes to a couple of places, that's all. So when we call init a Nornir, this one configure logging is true. I really don't understand why this argument is still here. Uh, it should be part of the config itself. So then we take and then we configure logging based on this. So let me think. Okay, and then we call Nornir. Now, I also want to make sure that logging is not called here anywhere. Um, okay, interesting. Why logger is...
Okay, uh, let's do the following. I'm going to go to my test logging file and I'm going to uh, drop into the debugger here to inspect uh, what are the um, to inspect what are the loggers that are configured here. So let's do import. Well, and I have to say interact. Yeah. So I have to import logging here. And let's say logging dot level. Well, um, logging get logger root. By default, it's set to critical. It's set to critical. and handlers and then there is rotating file file handler so there is a nonlinear log handler here um, now what if i say nonlinear uh, nonlinear is set to debug okay and handlers and then there is this right um critical not set okay what about nonlinear core so nonlinear core doesn't have any handlers which is fine though it should be propagating okay so yeah he, he, this is where the issue is um the root uh, logger has a rotating file handler and then um, get logger nornier also has rotating file handler so whenever there is a log nornier log it's being written through this logger and through this logger twice this is the reason of the issue so yeah i well right now i'm pretty clear with what's going on now we have to rework it properly um Okay, I am up for the challenge. So first of all, I would kill this. I think it's not the right place for this to be. Like if we already have config logging, it should be there. So I would just kill this first. Now, now this one doesn't, is not relevant anymore. So I'm going to kill it and we like always configure logging, but there will be a twist. Uh, so config load from file, we go here. Okay. So you load from file, blah, blah, blah. And then we have this config and we, uh, we have to get logging config. Okay. So now here, this is where it's kind of interesting. I like, this is weird. I'm going to kill this. This is not the right place for it to be. Um, and this kills it as well. So I will definitely add enabled. And as this will be bool and schema and default 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 is debug in description description uh, whether to configure logging or not okay and default is going to be true okay. by default we are going to configure logging so that user doesn't need to care about it so then there is also level which is debug um, hmm it should be string 
Okay, this is interesting. How about Python convert word debug to logging debug? This is not what I want. Yeah, this is by the way about that propagate. This is probably kind of like the most difficult thing to understand about logging. Okay, so default logging is enabled, level is debug, file is not near log and format. Um, I think I'm going to change this format a little bit. So logging is different to console, okay, prefix is this, we don't care about that. Level is this. Um, I think I can also change this. I can leave logging config level and just change it to upper case, just in case. Now you will still need enabled logging config. I think I can change this attribute a little bit. Conf conf um
Hmm. Okay, so and then it says, oh, it's incorrect argument. So you will have to fix this as well. Okay, so class login config object level, yeah, it's still enabled. We will not have loggers here anymore. We can kill this as well. Uh, we will say enabled, um, enabled bull level is this okay fine okay we are going to import sys here as well um, since we are going to use uh, cstd out I understand why there are like this this but to be honest I mean the reason why that okay for now I'm going to kill it I understand the reason why but I think we should keep an API clean so the, the reason why that fo both file and format those are shadowing built-in names uh, and file is default well default type so in fact I don't understand why it's not file name why it's not file name it should be file name it's just file name To be honest, it's not even file name, it should be file path. File path. Okay. David is going to kill me. <laughs> because it's changed in the public API and he hates those. He will say, oh, we will have to bump the version again. I'm sorry, David, we will. <laughs> okay. Okay. It says parameter loggers is, is unfilled. What does it mean by that? We don't have loggers. Oh, okay. Here it is. We are killing this. It's useless. Okay. So enabled pool. Yeah, we'll have to say here enabled as well. So enabled. Uh, enabled. Now here we'll have file path. Now we are, should be good. Okay, so now the main thing is to get this right. Um, I'm look. I'm thinking like to kill this completely, and um, and yeah. Um, so here is the thing. My idea was that we um, the only re the only way we are going. Well, not the only way, but the only situation when we are going to configure logging for you only if you didn't touch python logging already so we are going to like do it for you but if you did like if you did like logging basic config or something we don't want to intervene this was my idea so 
this is what I'm going to change right now. I think this particular case I can refer to my PR. I think I did their pretty good job reworking that. So I'm going to uh, check that. So, okay. Um, where it was? Uh, it was logging. And here I just have to find it. Um, Nope, doesn't seem to be here. All right, I think it could be in the core. I think it was pretty somewhere here. What? No. Oh, here. They have configured login. Yeah. So, yeah. What this does is that, okay, if not, config logging enable we return and then I get Nornier logger and then I change it configure logging only if the user didn't touch Nornier logger using did deconfig or via programmatic way All right so um, yeah I'm going to do this as well I think I can pretty much kill all of that so we will need this one and we will need the root logger, root logger as well and yeah now and what was the level okay there's a login debug here fine Okay, Nornier logger is this, and yeah. So, yeah, here we go. We can say that if if um, them uh, if self enabled well if not self enabled or and we will check this in a second so if uh, logging is not enabled then we just leave this function okay um, now another way we can check this is if Nornier Logger, logger level is equal to logging not set as well well actually not equal to not set so what are situations where we don't configure logging if uh, if it's not enabled by a parameter then we don't touch it if the level is not not set so not set is default level. So we are saying if you set it to something specifically, it means that you know what you're doing. So we will not mess with your config anymore. So this is another piece. And then I guess the first, the third situation would be or um, root logger, logger level or I can say if uh, Nornier um, well now if root logger uh, level is not equal to logging warning which is default uh, I think we can actually check this as well so a logging warning 
is 30. Oh, um... So Python import logging and then we say logging get a logger uh, a level is 30 and if it's equal to logging warning true now nah, I actually don't like this If logging get logger level, I mean, I, I could say I could set this to warning already. No, this last piece is incorrect. Uh, I think I can say if root logger has handlers. So don't configure logging when one um, cell well um, log well self nah enabled false. Second situation if uh, Nornir logger, I will say equals to false. If Nornir log logger's level is something different, different than not set, uh, then three. If if root logger has some handlers, which means you know how to configure logging already. Yeah, this third one may be questionable. But I will leave it. Don't configure logging when enabled equals to false. Normal log logger's level is something different than non set. If root logger has some, which means you know how to configure logging already. Okay, fair enough. Now, so alternatively, we will just have to. Uh, create handlers. Now this part is uh, what I can copy paste pretty much. So yeah. Okay. So nonlinear logger propagate false. Nonlinear logger set level. We will say. Uh, self dot level formatter is going to be logging formatter from self dot format uh, if self uh, file path handler logging handlers uh, yeah I also need to say Okay, so if a cell file pass handler, if logging handler is rotating handler, um,
help me by the way see the chat thank you for your contribution and link me up uh how much time did it take from ccna to cca and i'm uh and i'm sorry that it took me a while to read the chat i was really focused on this so yeah the question is how much time uh did it take from ccna to cca uh, okay that's very good question um so let me think i let me pull up my shirt and it will be correct hopefully ccna shirts nope. certificates okay ccna rs so CCNA RS I certified in 2013. Okay, so I started um, I started studying for it when I was part of Networking Academy. So I think it was around like October 2012. So it was 2012. Now, uh, let me remember when I got my. Well, I can also. I also have here RS, CCNP RS. So CCNP, I received one and a half year later in January 2015. So I started around like October 2012. One year later, I received my CCNA. One and a half year later, I received my CCNP. And what was the date for CCE? Uh, so it's already 2019. My RS expired in 2018. So this was 2016. Okay, so yeah, so I passed my CCE RS in uh, July in June or July 2016, so one and a half year later after CCNP. Um, I think I think between January and like September of that year, I didn't really study. Well, I didn't study at all for CCA, so I took like a break and I was taking care of like university and stuff. So from from this date until the um i think around like august uh, 2015 i did not study then i started studying and then i passed in july next year i hope this answer your question this answers your question Thank you for your question, by the way. Okay, if we have a pass to the file, then we create a handler. Teaching file, file handler, config file, yeah. So this one is will be self file path. Um, and max bytes. By the way, to be even better, I will do this. Uh, from path sleep. So path sleep path is very cool library. They handle path uh, very very good regardless of the platform specific format like if it's forward slash or backslash um so i, re I really like this so we say we'll create the handler and then this handler gets a formatter which is formatter 
and then ignoring your logger we adding this handle okay this makes sense to me now this one is going to be self to console so and here we say if um, if this then we will log info and, and debug to std out and warning error and critical to std error uh, by the way, I actually have to check this. Python should be sent error logs to SCD error. Python default stream handler. I read about std error and std out for for a long time and I still don't remember how they are different. Mm -hmm. So default is std error. I think we, I think this makes sense, right? Um, so because by default we put warning. I think I can actually double check this. So if I say uh, logging handlers, well import logging handlers, um, logging handlers and um, stream handler, handler. Uh, what is going on here okay and then I can say stream yeah so default is std error um, yeah so in I'm trying to remember why I have this now it comes back to me so if it's in for debug log it really shouldn't go to um std error right so in this case i'm creating a, lo a, a log it's stream handler std out i'm saying that i'm setting a formatter i am uh setting a level which is debug Whoa. Hmm. Set formatter, formatter, set level, logging, debug, add filter. Lambda record, a uh, record level no uh, number is less than logging info. 
Okay, so logging info is 20. Logging debug is 10. So we are saying if a logging uh, level is less than info, less or equal than info, this is how it's going to be done. Now for the uh, uh, for others, so log warning error and critical to HDR. So in this case, this handler. We say it's going to be CDR, formatter is formatter and set level warning. So this warning, this is debug. Now, does it matter what is the level we specify? Um, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, so if our logger says that it is of level warning, right? Um, and we have a log which is like of another level and doesn't fall into that so we will not even check uh, our handlers so yeah i think we are good here um so log warning are critical to here okay perfect all of this makes sense to me i'm thinking to actually kill all of that um this is just useless right now Uh, yeah, and I think this is pretty much it now. This shadows uh, name logging from other scope. I don't care. I don't think it should be a big issue. Self logging is logging. Yeah, I think this should be fine. Uh, and you can kill list from here. Okay, so I think we are actually pretty much done here. Um, and I don't need this anymore so yeah now there is another thing that caught my eye and I don't remember where anymore this conf Config, cons, no near. I think it's supposed here. Yeah. So I think we can just move this part directly here, and then this is useless. But this parameter is not used. Oh yeah, you'll have to say self logger uh, is equal to logger. Now I don't think this is useful at all. Um, self logger. To be honest, I I don't know why we can move this. So let me think. What would be the reason for you to use uh, to like pass the logger to Nornir and then log there? I don't. Yeah, this is not the best practice. To be honest, so I would do this. So logger. Uh, then we can remove this completely and remove this. Now there will be a bunch of issues. Um, self logger. So this will change to logger. This will change to logger. Uh, okay. Now the last piece is that I want to find every single instance of logger. Uh,
Okay. Okay, this part is fine. Um, this one is here. Logger debug. No worse file found within pass in one of the supported extensions. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. Okay, let's move forward. Logger error. Uh, couldn't parse is either any or any format in Ansible PY. Uh, wait, what is this? I would add Ansible parser. Well, actually, we don't need it because we will find the module name. So it will be fine. So, couldn't parse is neither INI or YAML file. Oh, and this is a problem, by the way. So, it should be R. And then we should use commas for logger. Uh, let's go back and see if this is okay. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Task. This is. Uh, I think we can change this. I move logger everywhere on top. Well, um, okay. Yeah, we'll have to change this as well. So, what the hell is this? Okay, logger info, self host name and self name. So, okay, self name is just a task name. Uh, we actually have an example from Narnia log, we can check. Running task. logger info running task csr dev and make a send command running task I would say host um, running task yes R And to be honest, this for me is debug level. Um, those are individual hosts that are going to, to put this. So for me, it's definitely debug level. So debug, we do our stuff and then accept your subtasker. Host mm, R failed with traceback um, task 
r fail to be trace back and then this is going to be s uh yeah okay so and then you can say self host name uh oh yeah this is incorrect so self host name um self name and tb okay then here logger error uh i think it's pretty much the same thing here right okay severity level logging error if r failed okay i don't know what this does really what is this severity level um okay looks good let's move forward so Okay, logger info. What is this? Okay, it's not in here. Okay, so this one, I think it's fair that, um, Okay, so this is when we do an error, an error uh, RAR, uh, run. So running task, hmm, um, with number of workers. I think, I think this number of workers actually makes zero sense to me uh what makes sense though is num hosts so this will be self uh len length of self inventory hosts so then we will have two type of logs if num hosts uh we will say that and else we will change it so we'll have logger let's say warning actually i have to check if uh log python warn or warning okay you should use logging warning okay so then um we have to have a good message so that we understand that this um, task is not going to be run on anywhere so damn okay logger warning um info running task task r is not has not been run because Uh, due to zero hosts selected task hmm, has not been run 
due to zero hosts selected. Okay, task name. Task has not been run due to zero host selected. Okay, running task hmm, uh, on the hosts. Okay, I like this. So then this is going to be task name uh, and num hosts. Um, this is going away. Keyword arguments are going away. Uh, actually, let me check what we had. So, running task hmm, on D hosts um, these arcs as uh, yeah I think this will be fine so then we say here um, keyword arcs no hosts and then if there are no hosts, task has not been run due to zero hosts selected. Okay, yeah, this looks fine to me. Oh, uh, we have to say that it's task name. Fine. Okay, yeah, this looks good. So let's continue hunting for that logger. Uh, so we took care of these two. Now this one, logger, okay, oh this is the last one by the way, so yeah we will have to, yeah, failed, this is incorrect, we have to say failed to load import path. Um, this will be R and then this is also incorrect and we will say um, to load in for a pass R I can let's do fail to import and here I will say import path and uh, we'll say X info true Um, and I will double check Python logging Python logging log exception I think it's x underscore info uh, x info true yeah and I don't even need this to be honest I think we should be more specific raise exception is very broad um, yeah, I think this is pretty much it here. So I well Not for the stream, but for the like fixing this problem So I think I took care of every single Thing here Okay, I am ready to Run my functions uh, my test logging um so logging should change 
So let's run this and see what's going to happen. Okay, this still works, which is a good good sign. Very good, very good. So let's look on our log. So let first of all um, info running task net micros and commit with arcs on two hosts. Now debug level we say host hmm running task net micros and command host hmm running task net micros and command. Okay, this looks good. So like general run is about like how what is the task and how many hosts are going to run it then on debug level we actually have it for every single host now host info running task connection close connection task is arcs uh, hmm, on four hosts um, okay fine yeah we definitely got rid of the double um, double logs here which is good uh, and yeah this looks so much better than it was um, now there is one thing that kind of bothers me um, there is let me see what if we say I have to take an example from my one note So let's say import logging and I have this. So what if we say logging get logger um, root handlers? Yeah, okay. Okay, this looks so much better. So yeah, what I was checking is what happens when you do basic config and now the way I see it is, well, when you do this, we will have handlers here. So um, to be honest, I think I could check if root lag, uh, if a root logger is also not warning as well because you could also say like level something and it will go to console um, yeah i think i think i should do that as well so let's go back configuration I don't remember what it was. I think it was somewhere here. No. Nope. Okay, here. So I think another uh, valid uh, for if root logger. Uh, level is something different than warning uh, which is uh, which is default if root, uh, lo if root loggers level is something different than warning which is default Okay, so then we will say here if root le uh, logger level uh, is not logging warning. Okay. Okay, good. 
uh, I think this is very good. So now we have to We have to do two things. We have to write tests for this, at least some tests. And um, oh, well, first we have to do manual testing, to be honest. Um, So probably one of the like key features would be to check if I say if in the config file uh, I can say logging, logging, and I can say um, enabled, and I say um, true or false in YAML. Yeah, I think if I say false and if I rerun my thing again, um, if I rerun this, uh, I should see zero logs here. Which I see, there are no new logs here. Okay, so this works. Now another thing would be file path is equal to um, hello log. Uh, so let's rerun this and we should oh oh ouch. Yeah, Barossa will kill me because of this. Like, no, you should keep the same API. What are you doing? But I will be sneaky and I will try to open this PR anyway. Okay, so this runs. Now we should have a file called hello log, which we, we see here, hello log. So now this is in hello log, perfecto. So, okay, all right. So this kind of like different stuff works. Uh, I think we can say to console, uh, true as well. And we will also see this logs on the console, which we do. So if you say to console true, you will see this on the console. Awesome, perfect. So, okay, now this is not relevant. Now we will go to our test logging py file. And there are two things that I need to do. Uh, so first I would like to check if basic config works. So um, I will create a file here, here called external log and it has some format and it's level debug. Okay, and it's run as a first thing. So um, if I do this, the logs here should not appear anymore, um, hopefully. but they should appear in this um to be honest i actually should have added another thing i should have added like 
this. Uh, and then we will also say logger is um, logging, get logger, and we will say what? App. So we will have another logger. And here I will say logger info. Uh, and this logger info is going to have, we'll say, um, well, here, logger info before creating nor near object. So here we'll have logger info after creating nor near object. Here we'll say uh, logger info before running or in your task and then here we'll say logger info um, we don't need the result anymore uh, after running or your task okay so this is like my app apps log I um, set them up using basic config and the desired outcome is that since I know how to use basic config nor your logging should not be configured but the way what basic config does it sets it sets a root log, uh, logger setting so this should affect all, all loggers netmika Paramika, whatever, blah blah blah, all of them. Um, and I will actually set that to info. Um, so all loggers from every single library should be uh, should be written in this external log. Now I think I will add this, uh, delete this file, uh, and then we will rerun this. And the desire, yeah, look at this. I think this is beautiful. Well, there is one problem though. Yeah, well, what? Why is this is a debug? This doesn't make any sense to me. And let's look on this external log. Well, this external log is empty. What is going on? This one is, by the way, something weird is going on here. Um, default YAML doesn't exist. Wow, I have to find this. This looks so weird. Um, where is this coming from? Simple inventory. What? Wow, this is so bad. Ah. Let's say well not found. Yeah, by the way, this is very common mistake. Whenever you do logging dot something, you should always use this C format for lo logs. So you should put percent something and then comma in this. Apparently this is more efficient um, than any other method. Spe it's very specific to logging. So, okay, I fixed that. Now we still have some kind of issue though. 
so this external lock is empty but my f oh I know what it is I should have commented this out okay let's rerun this again I think it will be fine so we should we should not see anything on the console here but the external lock should be yeah before creating Nornia object, before running Nornia task, running task net Miko with those arguments of two hosts. Now the Paramiko itself sends us the info logs, and then after running Nornia task, after running um, close connection task, after creating Nornia object. Okay, this looks good. So. This, uh, you see that nornier.log file doesn't have any new logs, but this external log has everything. So basic config now works the way it's supposed to work. So now I will kill this and I will uh, uncomment this. We'll have to change this a little bit. Um, well, disable existing loggers, in this case it doesn't really matter, it will be the same. Um, so... Well, I think I can leave all of them here. It's like, oh, here is how I set up logging for my app. Okay, so... Um, I have... Nornir, Netmiko, Telnetlib, Paramiko... Uh, log, uh, logs set up and the ro uh, root is also debug so everything is debug here um, yeah all right so let's run this uh, and it's both on the console as well as on the um, in the file so we should see a bunch of stuff here on the console okay and you should also see our app.log uh, and here you can find everything so there are I don't see Nornier logs though so yeah oh this is still broken interesting file not found I just fixed this why you are not Oh, yeah, I see it now. Okay. Okay, now this is correct. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to, um, even though we want to have Nornir on the debug level, I would like to change, let's say, uh, Netmiko to info uh, and Paramiko to info. Maybe even warning, right? Warning and then warning um, and then propagate every, everywhere is false so we should be all right okay so now it says nornier plugins inventory that simple line 40 defaults yaml file actually i will rename this i don't like this um, so let's say file not found file not found or has not was not found was not found was not found all right so and then nornier core on the info level and on the debug level is here okay so we filtered logs and then in up lock we will see that uh this was the run okay we also don't see those not net Miko and param, uh, paramiko logs. Now let's say I want to like um, limit this even further. Uh, so I will say let's have net Miko on the info level. Uh, by the way, if you are like new to Python logging, I really suggest you to read about it a little bit and try it on the uh, on the like doing some hands-on and please start using this format yeah it's kind of like big 
but just copy paste it from some of uh, Stack Overflow answer, modify it the way you like, and then use it all the time. Um, it it's really is so great. Like I mean, it's so granular. Like there is some library that apparently writes to some level that you don't want to see. Uh, so you can silence it very easily. Uh, so I'll always use this. Uh, yes, it's big and it takes like 30 lines here, but it's just so beautiful. Okay, look at this. So I change this to info. Now the only tasks that I see are like from the core. I don't see those debug level tasks. So if I go to app.log, yeah, I also see these two as well. So I think this is super cool actually. Um, and I'm sorry again, I like, I missed the whole chat uh, since I was very focused on this. It's YAML, it's, it's anything. That is a beautiful idea too, but why does your code such a waste? You could spend the time programming more. Uh, I like your sarcasm, thank you. Um, 100% agreed. I feel like lots of network engineers drastically underestimate or outright don't use the logging library in the apps they make. It's incredibly powerful, very well done. It just takes a bit of time and practice to fully understand. Yeah, uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher J. Hart. I, yeah, I just agree with you. And it's not only within network engineering community. Um, I have seen a lot of Python developers um that we're saying you know what like it's just too hard or it's too complex uh and i was one of those i was one of those people who like i don't understand how python logging works there are this weird function calls there is this dict config that takes like 40 lines um and yeah i was also in ignorant I started learning like Python logging when um, when I found some issue in Ornier um, where I wanted to configure like logging the way I wanted it to, but it didn't work. So the Ornier itself was hijacking log logging config. So like I I set up my logging the way I wanted it to, but then Ornier was doing it, its own thing. And then my logging was actually silenced. So my logging stopped working when I was starting using Nornier. So this was a like point where I said, okay, I really have to understand how it works, spend some time and fix it in the library as well. And I started, you know, learning it and it didn't take me a lot, maybe like a couple of hours of some, I was, um, there is some cool guide on on YouTube, YouTube Python logging in two parts. Uh, let me, th yeah, I think from this guy, from Corey Schaffer. So if you go hey this there, one, uh, and he has two parts. So logging basics and logging advanced. So 15 minutes and 20 minutes. So do this, like go through them these videos then do some hands-on to try to understand how it really works it's very from my perspective it's actually very easy compared to a lot of other stuff like for example python threading is so much harder um this is not hard like literally like python logging is not hard it's a public API is a little bit weird. It's using camel case. It's a little bit Java style, um, but it works. It's not super hard to understand. There are, there are, I think like three or four rules that you have to remember. Like if you don't configure, if you don't set level on your logger, then it will take the level from the parent. Um, and there are some other interesting stuff like um the if let's say if you have a lock um and you have propagate true and then parent has a level um lower well actually level higher 
it, that lock is still going to be processed by parent. There are some other interesting like corner cases, but again, those are written in doc docs. You spent this couple of hours to understand the whole thing and then you will be saved forever. Um, there is comment in the chat from Christopher. I always start with logging in every Python application right these days. Every time that I don't, I end up regretting it when I try to debug problems with print statements. I just, I, I can't do anything else than agree with you. Like, it's even to the point where I, I use Alfred, which is um, the launcher. So this is a launcher which like can find f find files for me, find stuff for me, but it also has snippets. So there, I have a number of snippets, and one of those is Python login configuration. So uh, let me show you. If I go, if I create here a scratch file, and I say log, uh, I have bank logging. I have my login login dict. Uh, which I reuse everywhere. <laughs> I, I have like a one another one for Docker, I think, to install Docker. I think for installing PyEnf as well. Uh, so yeah, lo Python logging is one of those. Um, so yeah, please do spend some time, learn how it works. It, you will you will be grateful to yourself. <laughs> Okay, so this all works actually the way I expected it to work. I am very happy with the progress we have done. So let me see the time. So it's, um, we have been streaming for two hours, 14 minutes so far. Uh, we have to write some tests for this and then uh, I should, I want to submit PR. Um, so let's go ahead and um, write tests. So first we have to find the proper place to write those. From my perspective, um, this should be part of testing it on your, uh, testing it on your, yeah, I think it should be here. Testing it on your programmatically, la la la, okay, fine. So we, we should have a bunch of logging tests here. Um, Just to need learning programmatically. Um, transform function. Well, I think I will just add it here. So, test init learner um, logging. Mm. Coming up with function names here is going to be awful. Something for now. <laughs> Let's try writing test first. And let's also look on the a config file. Um, yeah. To be honest, I don't really care about all of the options. Um, Defaults, defaults. So, um,
okay we import login here so let me think what do we want to test well first i think we want to like test what is going to be default behavior right and um i think default behavior would be that we want to have uh so we want to say root uh no nornier logger let's have root logger um will be logging get logger and then nornier logger is going to be a logging get logger nornier so you will want to, to test a couple of things you want to assert that a root logger um, level is uh, root logger on uh, no it's logging warning second we want to make sure that there are no bogus handlers uh, assert not then the next piece would be the nornier logger should be level um, logging debug and then uh, there should be one default handler handlers um, one and then assert lan of nornier logger um no um is instance nornier logger handlers dira should be uh what should be logging a stream handler well actually no file handler right and then the last piece should be that the handler zero should be what um like name of the file that it is um hmm oh, I, I think that's fine we're just testing that there is a file handler attached so this is default login um test okay now we want to um, I want to change the config um, so I think uh, config file inventory keyword okay, arguments config file um, file deserialize okay i think i can say logging and then i can provide another dictionary so what we are going to say will be um logging programmatic um console right say console okay so we still use this config file but we are going to say um, logging to console true right so um, what this means is that the number of configured loggers should be uh, what well handlers should be several we should th have three handlers now so root logger no new logger okay this part should be the same this part should be the same now the number of handlers should be three um and we should say that Uh, we should assert that any of nornier logger handlers uh, is instance 
Wait, what did I do? Yeah. So is instance handler uh, logging handler any is instance for handler and handlers uh, handlers <clears throat> and then uh, we also have to say that another one is should be stream stream handler. We just say that there should be at least one stream handler and there is, should be another one which is file. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, so this should be true. Uh, fine, so then the next piece would be we want to disable it, programmatic disable. So then this will be enabled false enabled false uh, now what this means is that all of these settings are going to be the same um, nor near like level should be not set and uh, nor near has handlers should be false okay Okay, um, so then the, we, we need two more. So we need test init nor near basic logging. So basic um, ah, uh, logging basic config. So here we are going to logging basic config and the only thing I'm going to change is the level. So I'm going to change level to debug. So what this should be, uh, should result in is the same thing. So root, le uh, root logger should be this, should be, uh, um, so root level should be debug. And um, well, this doesn't matter. And Nornier uh, should be not set and it should not have any uh, handlers. Okay, now the last piece would be dict config. Now this one sh could be tricky. Um, so we will have to import, import logging dict config. Uh, config. So here I have to say config, dict config. Um, and I think I can add this as a constant. So, this one doesn't really matter what I say here. Yeah, this should not matter at all. Um, the end result of this should be that there are no handlers for nonlinear logger. Um, so we are going to say dict login dict. We open this and then we say root logger is this. I think I can do this kind of spacing everywhere. So we say that well, this doesn't matter anymore. To be honest, in this case, this does not matter as well. So I can delete the root logger. We say that the this should be not set and um, there should be no handlers. This is pretty much it. Okay, this actually looks good to me. Um, Make sure it's one space. Okay, good. So let's uh, run PyTest. The only problem is that I don't remember how to run tests. So um, we also changed this recently. So there are several things, spread the word, reporting bugs, fix typos, writing, contributing plugins. In order to run test locally, you need to have Docker and Docker Compose installed. 
uh, you need some services to run tests. Uh, those are managed with Docker Compose. I have to do this. So let's go ahead and run this. Oh, okay. Okay, this will take. I like how David names his container stupid SSH container. This is pretty fun. And then we will have to run tests. Um, that will run the entire test suite. If you want to target some specific tests, uh, well, for now I need to run PyTest, so I'm going to do this. Though this will take forever since building container just takes forever. Um, To be honest, I'm not sure why we are running tests in Docker. I don't want to run them in Docker. <laughs> uh, let me see the make file. So it says um, you should run build test container, which will Docker compose build nonier. How about if I just run by test? Nice. I I get a lot of Fs. Test configuration fails too. Jesus Christ, why everything is failing now? Holy shit. Oh god. Well, there are some connections. Those are... we don't care about those. This is so bad. Um, I think we can start with this one. So test configuration fails. Those uh, methods, I think they fail because we don't have connection. Um, interesting. Yeah, something here is definitely wrong. Uh, so, where it fails. Okay, logging defaults. After we run init nornier, root logger level is, it should be a warning, why it's debug. What is this? I mean, I don't know, this absolutely makes zero sense to me. 
So we run in it Nornir, fine. Root logger. Root logger set to debug. Like how it's set to debug at in the first place. I don't understand. I mean default logger uh, logging level is um, it's not debug, right? It's it's warning. It's I don't understand. Okay, this is 30. And this is 10. Like, where is it coming from? I think this has something to do with the way PyTest Py works. Um, oh. I see that this set is set to debug. In my code, I didn't set this to debug anywhere, anywhere. Like this is not set to debug at all. things I change this here right so I don't I don't check I don't test this root logger I just do checks and that's all so I don't touch it anywhere but still its level is debug in the logs this just baffles me I just don't get it like it seems that um, where it is I think it's set like from here. Wow. Let me do one test. No, it's still failing. How it is possible? I'm actually thinking to like drop to debugger here. Like Is it X?
Yeah. Okay, so I have here. Now I have to change this. I will do it here, uh, lower. Like, how, how, like root logger handler is file handler, test log, no set, log capture handler, I think, okay, I may know what that is. Yeah, you know what? I think I will need to. So first of all, I will uncomment all of this. I see now. So by default, by test configure is logging for you. That's a problem. So I don't see any reason to test this. So this is useless, and this is useless too. This will never be correct. Now programmatic disable, yeah again this is useless too. Like I can't check anything from the root logger. Um since PyTest configures logging for me. So So let's do PyTest test score. They're still failing. Um, Ikigo, thank you very much for following. Okay, now there is Pydentic error. Extra fields permitted, value extra. Whoa. Okay. Um, so some tests here fail. A bunch of tests, really. Between defaults. Oh. Test config defaults. Okay, I see this. I have to check this. So test config defaults. What was the file? Now this also <laughs> baffles me. Okay, there's something very interesting going on here. For some reason this is set to info, which is, should not be the case. Um,
Okay, so the problem is that PyTest configures logging on its own. And it interferes how we set up logging from the Nornier perspective. Okay, I like this idea, so I'm actually going to change this as well. And I think I can move back all everything I deleted. Okay, and then we'll have to plus blogging test. Okay, and then we will need setup, and we will have to say Okay, so I moved all of that. Basically, I'm deleting all logging configuration here. Um, now this is supposed to be working now. Hopefully. Hmm, now tests are working here. That's pretty cool. So let's run all tests on the core. Okay, I think you'll still have to fix the defaults. Um, yeah. So some tests are failing. Test score, deserializer, test configuration, yeah. So this one should be changed. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking that, did I change it to info? Uh, I can see it. Or I think it's still debug. Okay, default is debug. Okay, fine. So I will have to test configuration. Yeah. So here we should fix this. So this logging is debug. Running log, default log format. Um,
and then here should be enabled true login debug file path format to console false and this should be deleted basic Oh, I, I forgot about this completely. So, um, yeah, I have to do additional things. So if this file pass is empty, then I, oh, it's all right. It's a, been taken care of. Oh, I can, why I'm saying this, I can just check for truthiness and it should be fine. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty much it. I think this should take care of all of this stuff here. Um, okay, let's rerun this. Now let me see the chat. No, no comments in the chat. That's all right. Um, let me see. Okay, so locks are still failing. Awesome. going on here hi Robert Thank you very much for the comment. I really, I really am jealous uh, regarding your weather. <laughs> Where I am right now, it's super cold and I just want to, uh, don't want to go outside at all. I wish I was in, in Florida right now, to be honest. Uh, yeah, okay, I think, okay, this is a problem here. Test config basic. So when we compare those, those are going to be level debug. Um, so this should take care of one problem. Now, 
Now this though doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Just a search debug level is 10. C logging debug. Wait what? Um Is there Um, I live in Poland, in Europe, and um, let me check what weather we have right now in Fahrenheit. I, I know what it is in Celsius, but I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. Okay, so right now it's minus 4 degrees Celsius, which is um, minus 4 Celsius to Fahrenheit. So it's 25, 25 degrees Fahrenheit. It's cold. Cooling KPC is easier. <laughs> Where are you right now? Oh, I already answered that, sorry. Below freezing, perfect. Just leave PC outside and run long cables. <laughs> well, I, I actually don't have desktop, so I have only laptop and to be honest, it's not super cold though the fonts are very loud um, Okay, so the function that I check right now is actually a bug which was reinstated due to retain, uh, to retain backwards compatibility. Okay, so I can't use that. Um, and my tests are still failing. So deserialize defaults. So this one is failing. Um, yeah, this is failing because this should be debug. Um, debug uh, does deserialize basic so this one is failing too uh, yeah because of the same problem um, okay hopefully this will get us our results So, hopefully, yeah. Okay, 89 passed uh, in 8, but 15 seconds. All right, so. Hmm. Okay, so let me run the, the whole test suite. I don't, well, they will not work because I don't have all of the Docker containers up. So, the next step would be to run that. Okay, FFFs, test remote command, test SFTP. Yeah, this looks more or less fine. Um, The, uh, yeah, I will have to remember how to run PyTest files. 
starting development environment, running tests. So I think I could try to run make tests. Though before running that, there is um, we also need to run black. When you use this black, it's required to run black, and then I can say black dot. Okay, so let's also run black to fix our problems. Uh, yeah, and now I can say make tests, um, and um, but this will take forever. So now would be if you have guys any questions or something that you would like to chat about now would be a perfect time because this will take uh, quite a while since I don't have the docker container built yet so it will be super long I think like more than five minutes probably even ten um, so during this time I don't really have anything to do Did you go to school for Python? I did not. So in my um, in the high school, we were taught Visual Basic, which was horrible. I hated programming during that time. Um, I was doing so. The way I started learning Python there was the following: there was uh, there were online courses. It was very it was very new at the time. So I think it was around like five, six years ago. It, the online courses just started rising. There was, they were not popular. And um, so, and by the way, there was some uh, dropped frames, but now I think we are back. So, um, yeah, there were, there were online courses just started and I was very interested because I didn't really like our program at university. So I, um, I was doing this course from Stanford on cryptography and it was very interesting to me, but besides like the course itself, like explaining how crypto works and stuff, there were also programming exercises. And um, I didn't know Python before, so they provided um, starter code in Python, so I didn't know any of that. Um, but I really wanted to do them, so you like get an extra credit for those. Uh, so I started learning it on the fly, just to be able to uh, complete those assignments. Um, I didn't know a lot back then, I was just trying to make them work. I I barely un, like understood what exactly I was doing, but uh, yeah, I started like doing other like Python courses at the same time, reading docs, some tutorials, again, just to get things done. So um, as you can imagine, a lot of assignments took much longer than they should. So I remember almost every, before every deadline, I was going to bed around 8 a.m. just to finish the task in time. But I finished it, it was okay. And then I realized that Python is very cool and very powerful and I started learning it on my, cell, uh, on, on my own, uh, mainly from other courses. Um, yeah, and then later I got a part-time job as software developer um, where I was using Python Python to do the work. Um, yeah, and now I have been doing Python for around six years in total. So I wouldn't say like I go to school for Python, but I would say like I learned it on my own using different online materials. Mm 
Okay. What I see on the screen, warning treated as error, file not found, how to ref API inventory RST. <sighs> okay, this is interesting. That's inspiring following you. Thank you very much, Robert. I. That said, I do, well, uh, I do m more like network programmability stuff. So like, how do you apply Python to networking? Um, so I don't just, you know, focus on Python, but Python is a big portion of this channel. Thank you. Um, honestly, I have no idea what this error means. Uh, I mean, I, I see what it means. I don't un I'm not sure how to fix it though. So it says this file how to ref API inventory RST uh, not found. Very cool. So two one one nor near docs docs um docs how to and I and B checkpoints handling connection checkpoint what why is this even a thing is it what is it part of the uh, no I don't think so uh, I don't think it's part of the this box um docs how to no the dot file is not here the ipnb checkpoints handling checkpoint ipnb file not found uh yeah okay so it's maybe a leftover from my previous files since they, i think they are in git ignore uh, checkpoint yeah checkpoints are here in the git ignore so um, yeah I think it was a leftover from that so let me run tests again all right is it going to rebuild container all the time this is insane yeah I would like to change this this just takes too long I think we can, what we could do, um, so it says docker compose minus f build nor near, um, docker compose, hmm? so it builds nor near, what's slash nor near, I mean, okay, docker file, docker file tests, arc python stretch I'll get update pandoc pip install minus r docs pip install minus r dev um, and okay this this is not much um, okay now it's running sphinx Oh, here we go. More checkpoints problem. God damn it. Um, here's what I want to do. Linux delete all direct all uh, sub directories with specified name
Okay. Okay, let's run our tests again. Hi Jim, I missed the beginning of the stream. How's Peter doing? Still in HTS DC, miss him a lot. Hi HTO, um, if you would put your name, that would be much easier for me to know who exactly you are. Um, but yeah, Peter is still in uh, HTS data center. Um, at least for now. Are you coming to Cisco Life Europe? So we all will be there. As build succeeded. Now run uh, on your Pylama dot, so this may still fail. Hopefully, not. Wow, we are we are staring for more than three hours now. Huh. Okay, yeah, I really need to get this done, submit PR, and then I can enjoy the rest of my unique. Please work, please, please, please work. Oh, hi, Anatoly. He, ac he actually... Um, oh, sorry. I don't see Anatoly in the chat.
No. Why code it? Code it can decode. Phylum core. Wow, this looks actually like problem with Pylama itself. Okay, I will leave this. This is weird. This is so weird. This is just weird. So I say it's fixed in 742. I have 766 so it should be fixed but it's not To be honest folks, I don't know how to fix this. Okay, <laughs> I think I will have to add docker ignore. Um, docker ignore when mounting volume. Using docker compose I'm able to use um, not most local, but ignore it in the container using the following. So everything in dot angular app is mapped to up up. Then I create another mount volume, which is now an empty directory. Even if my local machine does slash angular app module is not empty. Um, Can you summarize why non-neuro overrun so last time I've checked code it was awful similar to my napalm. Uh, non your code is awful. Um, this is actually very weird for me to hear since I think like I read the whole non your code base I think in one or two evenings. So it wasn't, I couldn't say it was bad. Um, so my, my points regarding non versus sensible are the following. No YAML to write your tasks. The main 
uh, I mean, if you're doing something very simple, like you have, oh, I want to run this command on this group of devices and it's fine. But the second you want something more like, oh, I would like to dynamically load this file or I will, uh, on this particular group um, or I want to have like some very complicated when statement, the uh, Ansible YAML becomes a mess. Um, you also can't, I mean, verifying if it's correct or not even if you're using Ansible Lint, which not many people do, uh, verifying that it is correct is actually very bad. The whole like debugging, troubleshooting, there is not. I mean, there is there is a big room for improvement on that front as well. So if you have hit some kind of uh, problem, uh, if you have some kind of problem or your YAML was not formatted correctly, it's actually really hard to troubleshoot that with Ansible. Um, it all comes down to you don't have the... Uh, you can't use all of your Python tools. You can't use PyCharm to verify uh, correctness of your syntax of your tasks in a YAML playbook um, and stuff like that. With something like Nornier, everything is Python, so you can use what every every single tool, like MyPy to to do static type checking. You can you can use PyTest. You can use uh, Python debugger without any issues. Uh, so then the next point is that the um, Ansible itself is very slow, like super slow. It's partially because of its architecture. So first of all, they use forks instead of threads. Second of all, even if you do like local, I mean, their whole architecture was around, let's uh, execute the, mo the code remotely. Uh, so if you, uh, by default, like uh, Ansible architecture was, okay, let's a uh, package, well, let's serialize this uh, Python file, send it uh, remotely and then run it on that remote server. So obviously with network devices, this makes zero sense. So then they kind of like, oh, but we can use local mode, right? You can, but then this whole architecture creates more, more problems for you than it solves. So um, even if you use mod local, even considering that you are forking Python processes multiple times, uh, they still do serialization and deserialization of the module. So your local module is going to be written to disk and then read from disk um, and then read from disk uh, and then it's going to be run, which just just super retarded from my perspective. So these kind of points where it's slow, hard to troubleshoot in debug, uh, even though it's written in Python, the main interface is not Python. Uh, so integrating it with something like, um, with something like you know, the most typical example would be like web app, right? You would want to have a web app, which on the back end runs some of your network tasks, right? So even doing that, you can do that. There is Python module for Ansible uh, or their API for in Python, but it looks super ugly and. Yeah, um, whenever you want to do something more complex in Ansible, like, oh, like something that goes beyond, let me run this command on n, n number of devices, um, you will end up writing Ansible modules and their dev experience is also super, well, I wouldn't say it's like super complex, but it not, it's not user friendly, at least it wasn't. I feel you, so there's a comment in the chat. I feel you as will not position itself as programming language and this uh, introduces all this complexity. Yes, I mean, exactly. They, they kind of say, oh, like, we are not, um, but Ansible is not programming language. Like, you're not supposed to do all these things. Then the, the question is really like, what, why would you want to use Ansible in the first place? And like the main argument that I was taught, oh, like it's a good 
network automation engine well like if you want me to like if you want me to enable running some command on five devices uh, like the poor Python script without learning or without anything would not take much longer to be honest and it would be so much faster than Ansible um, I mean, and then people say, oh, you know, you should use some other orchestration tools on top of Ansible uh, and then, you know, you will be fine. Like, but again, like, then what kind of problem Ansible is solving for me, right? Uh, if I want to run some kind of orchestration on top of Ansible with third party product or with my custom code, I mean, why do I need Ansible in the first place? Uh, so, um, yeah, um, it all probably it all started because I had a project where I needed to build automation uh, like full-blown automation from day zero until like day one and two uh, configuration management in that case um, and but there were a lot of like dynamic stuff it wasn't just let me build uh, config from template it was like oh we actually need to reevaluate like how network topology changes or something like that and my first choice was Ansible I actually built the whole solution using Ansible um, and it wasn't pretty and it was slow it wasn't pretty my developer experience was not great I so I actually had a working solution and I hated myself for doing it so I started, you know, evaluating alternatives and this is how I came into Nornir. So the main, like for me, the main benefit of Nornir besides it's being Python and you don't need to write YAML is that it's a, uh, it's a abstraction for inventory uh, and for uh, doing multi-threading. That's all. So you get an easy way for you to have an inventory and you can easily write a plugin which will we just require from you give us hosts in the specific dictionary format and give us the groups in the specific dictionary format and then you can use Nornir uh, so there are like a number of plugins that some people like wrote for IPAM systems and all that stuff and they are super easy like super easy um, so this is the first thing and second thing you don't really need to understand like how Python multi-threading works it does for you in the background so like um, it does this for you in the background saves the results in some kind of structure and you can continue working with those um, yeah and and that's that's pretty much it but this is very useful from my perspective uh, obviously it was much much longer than can you summarize yeah it was more than a summary but yes and then I kind of started hating Ansible uh, I just I, I just don't see like I don't see a value for myself okay uh, I am not sure what I am supposed to do with this .env I mean um, Pylama exclude here. I think there should be some kind of setup CVG or something. Ignore, skip, yeah. Okay, let's run this again. Okay, so test configure. So, so typing list imported by a button used. So we have to address this too. So test configuration py. Uh, okay, this is useless now. And uh, test configuration py. This is what core deserializer. Per 
the serializer. Okay. So um, this should work. Pylama exclude. Yeah, I think I can run this and uh, yeah, this seems to be fine. I will try running this again, but I'm not very optimistic to be honest. Okay, folks. Let's see. Ah, uh, this will take take some time. So it felt on this sandbox. Um, yeah, well, I think it's still fine. Uh, it's, this is my local folder, so it doesn't really matter. So what we are going to do? Let me run black dot again, and um, okay, everything is good. It's status. Okay, so we have to get at. Uh, minus u, get status. Okay, so this works, and now I have to commit. Uh, well, let's let's commit it via GUI, by the way. It's a little bit easier to write better message. Uh, okay, so. Inversion file. Okay, so <clears throat> improve logging configuration. Improve nonlinear logging. Um, fix two bugs. So this should fix our um, which one? Uh, this one so fix and and this one uh, Nornier logging. Uh, Nornier logging is configured only when uh, no changes have been done to 
login to Python login. Um, and no more duplicate logs fix a usage uh, no a replace um, format and f strings in logs to percent strings according to best practices okay no more duplicate ro logs no. Uh, no more duplicate logs no near it does not Okay, I think this is fine. So no, no new login is configured only when no changes have been done to Python login. Normal du duplicate logs. Replace format and F strings in logs to percent strings according to best practices. Um, improved um, mes messages for some logs. Uh, improved, no, no, improve logging. Okay, I think this is good. So we what we commit and push this. Um, so this push to a new branch or region improve logging. So now if I go to uh, here. And then I can compare and create a pull request. And then base should be develop. Yeah. So let's create pull request. Okay. Good. So now our CI is running, but we will not wait for that. Okay, folks. Uh, Do you use VirtualBox for Docker? I found that working a little bit faster for me. Um, no, I don't use VirtualBox for Docker. I run those. I run Docker directly on Mac. It could be faster. It will probably be faster uh, in Linux machine. Um, there is. This is partially related to how. Um, since with Docker we are, we are sharing the kernel, there are some issues with, ins with installing some of the packages. Uh, so like for some packages you have to install them from source if you are running um, Docker for Mac. So yeah, uh, but still usually like after you build container, it's not a big deal anymore. Um, okay, folks. I don't see any other questions. We have been streaming for quite a while today. Uh, it's three hour 40 minutes, Jesus Christ. Uh, th let's wrap up. Today we were working on contributing. We were continuing contributing code to Nornier. Um, I have been working on uh, logging, how it's done inside Nornier. There are a couple of bugs open uh, there were actually two, one for duplicate output, another one for um, how Nornier hijacks, hijacks logging. So I have fixed both of those and submitted pull requests, uh, pull requests. so um, yeah, I feel pretty good that I was able to do something good for the community today. I uh, hope you find found some of that useful. I also did a lot of explaining how Python logging works um during today's stream uh so um we will not have two streams to we will not have two next streams so uh, since i'm going to cisco live europe i think i'm going on next sunday so we will not be able to to stream then but also after cisco live i'm staying for for like five more days in barcelona 
so I will be missing another Sunday so we will not have two next streams so we will see each other three weeks from now so I wish you an easy working week uh, if you will be a Cisco Life make sure you uh, be meet to uh, to talk to chat um, and yeah take care and I will see you next time bye everyone